Morning. So as Ben mentioned, uh, my name is Manish Goyal. I lead the AI practice at IBM Services. And uh, as part of uh, IBM Services, we've had an opportunity to work with hundreds of customers, uh, helping them apply AI to a variety of use cases across industries. Now, earlier this year, we interviewed about 5,000 C-suite executives for an AI study to understand you know, where they're making their investments in AI, what opportunities they're seeing, what barriers they're seeing in adopting AI at scale in the enterprise. And that's really the focus of my talk, of how, um, how we can help uh, AI uh, enterprises scale AI. So let's start with um, looking at the state of AI adoption in the enterprise. I know there have been a bunch of surveys that have been shown uh, in terms of uh, the adoption of AI in the enterprise. Uh, the top line message here is no different, right? Majority of the enterprises that were surveyed, interviewed, said that they are either adopting or implementing AI, right? So executives across these industries are looking at ways of scaling AI throughout their companies to go after the billions of dollars of opportunity that is available um, you know, as, uh, that AI uh, unlocks. Now, as they're going after this opportunity, they're stumbling against what you know, we refer to as the AI paradox. It's, it's deceptively easy to get started with AI pilots, right? launching AI pilots and getting great results, but it's extremely hard to move from those pilots to production deployments at scale. And you know, this is what you see on the right-hand side of this chart. Right? If you look at the number of, uh, or the percentage of customers or uh, participants who are in the later stages of their AI journey, right, whether they're implementing, operating, or optimizing AI systems, it's, it's a stark difference between the outperformers versus the rest. And you know, the outperformers are basically, in the 5,000 companies that we surveyed, uh, you know, companies that outperformed their peer group across you know, revenue growth and profitability. So there's a, there's a big difference between people who are able to, uh, companies who are, enterprises who are able to move to getting uh, to, uh, to the later uh, phases of their AI journey. So what we wanted to do was you know, look at what are these outperformers doing that is different from the rest uh, being able to move forward. So let's start by looking at you know, where they're making their AI investments, right? Across the board, um, you know, executives are focusing on customer retention, customer satisfaction as the primary objective of their AI investments, right? And they're doing this significantly over uh, going after operational cost reduction. Now, this makes sense, right? Companies have for decades stored a lot of information about their customers, right? And they have a lot of information about the customer interaction that they have been capturing. But so far, it was very hard to actually use that information, right? whether it be you know, survey results, you know, feedback on, online on in forums or in social media, or you know, photos of, or images of products and services in, in use, right? or contact center recordings of interactions between customers and customer service representatives. Now, all of that data has a tremendous amount of opportunity to understand what customers like or don't like about your product services or their customer experience. But with AI now, right, you can go after and take out the insights from all of that data and apply it back to deliver a much superior customer experience as well as improve your products and services. The second thing that we looked at well, and what these outperformers are doing is the amount of energy and focus they have on building out their digital and data infrastructure. And we see this repeatedly in engagements that we do with our customers, that you're going to really struggle in scaling up AI in the enterprise without a really uh, strong data and digital foundation. Now, AI is not sort of you know, plug and play. You can't just buy intelligence and apply it to business problems. Yes, there are building blocks available to get started. But the real hard work of managing the interplay between data, processes, technologies, all happens in-house. And that's where you create sustained value. 
So one of the other things that these enterprises are doing in this, as part of the data strategy is you know, really focusing on a globally relevant but regionally tailored approach to data privacy. Again, if you think about if you want to go after delivering a superior customer experience, you want to use all that customer data to deliver that experience, you better have a really good handle on how you handle that customer data and data privacy. Now, the third area um, that, you know, we, we, when we looked at the uh, survey results was, and this is sometimes, you know, not uh, you know, top of mind for uh, executives, is the real managing, you know, actively managing the workforce transformation that is needed to scale uh, AI in the enterprise. Now, if you look at the study results, you know, it's, it's a common refrain, you know, the biggest challenge and barrier to AI adoption is the lack of skilled resources, right? And usually that means, oh, we don't have the technical resources to implement AI. We have a lack of data scientists, data, lack of data engineers, and that is true. But one of the other areas where uh, enterprises are really struggling with, right, and have an e equally large gap is in individuals who understand both business and AI, right? So what these outperformers are doing really is taking a much more holistic approach to this workforce transformation, right? They're looking at um, not only, you know, the, the shift that's taking place, um, right? And it, it is, it's a nuance of, you know, how you have to uh, look at your workforce as we move to a much more of a human plus machine world, right? So they're looking at, you know, actively looking at how to manage the, uh, the lack of skills, the reskilling, the retraining that is required, the process reengineering, and the workflow changes that have to be managed as humans and machines work together. So, what I would like to do is just uh, next, you know, just talk a little bit about uh, you know four companies that, that I picked out uh, from you know, which we have worked with. Right? They they are all in different uh, different industries. They come from three different continents. But what is sort of common across uh, what they have done to scale AI in, in their enterprises is four things, right? They had a very clear strategy in terms of you know, what value, that business value, they were going after uh, by applying AI. Second, they had a very you know, structured approach to execution in terms of when they picked up pilots, right, tied back to business value, and a very clear criteria of moving those pilots from um, uh, to, to production. And they understood and underpinned that with um, you know, a strong data and digital infrastructure, right? whether they had it or they, they, they went after building that out as part of this process. And they actually actively manage the workforce transformation. So let me take the example of Credit Mutual. Right? It's a French bank, and they have you know, 20,000 advisors uh, across 5,000 branches, and they are the primary face uh, of the bank to their customers. And the challenge that they were having was the volume of uh, you know, uh, inquiries that they were getting online was around 350,000 uh, a day, right? And these were queries about you know, products, services, you know, accounts, whatever, right? And these advisors were getting completely bogged down by having to focus on uh, responding to, uh, you know, triaging and responding to those inquiries rather than spending time working with their customers to resolve their problems. So Credit Mutual decided to, you know, uh, you know apply AI and build out systems to help their advisors to drive better customer service. And the, you know, they piloted it, got some really great results, and then went to production. And when they went to production, they didn't actually see the, the results that they were seeing in the pilot. And what they found was you know, that the advisors were resorting back to their old habits of going back to the old systems, and which were taking up a lot of time. So they put in place a dedicated change management team to actively drive um, the adoption with the advisors. And as that went into effect, they saw some really stunning results, both in advisor satisfaction, customer satisfaction, and the amount of cross-sell, upsell that the advisors were driving. Now, I'm going to run out of time here, so I'm not going to be able to go through all of the examples here. But you know, Vodafone, Autodesk were examples of 
direct customer facing uh, applications, while Woodside, which is an oil and gas company out of Australia, was much more of uh, a similar credit mutual uh, in, uh, inward focusing or towards the employee focusing thing. So with that, you know, um, join me at uh, 11.05. Uh, I'll go into more details about uh, these examples and strategies that enterprises can use. Thank you very much for your time.